Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we are going to talk about Enterobius vomicularis. It is a continuation of the nematode series in the Parasitology series. I have recently uploaded a video on introduction to nematodes. Find its link in the description or in the top right corner. I hope you'll find it helpful. Before getting started, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Let's get started. Enterobius vomicularis. The word entero in enterobius means relating to intestine. So it is an intestinal nematode. It is also called as pinworm, threadworm or seedworm. It is responsible for causing the disease oxyuriasis, which is also termed as pinworm infection or enterobiasis. As in this picture, you can see that nematodes are the roundworms, so these are present inside the intestine. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the introduction of vermicularis. Now we'll discuss its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and then the prevention. Before starting to discuss what is the morphology of Enterobius vermicularis, I like to tell you that there are three developmental stages that exist in the life cycle of Enterobius vermicularis. The first one is egg, second one is larva, and third one is the adult worm. We'll discuss their morphology one by one. Let's start with the egg first. Shape. It is elongated and asymmetrical. One side is flattened while other side is convex. As you can see in this picture that this upper side is flattened and this other side is convex. Its size varies from 50 to 60 micrometers by 20 to 30 micrometers. Color. It is colorless but is barely visible in clumps of thousands of eggs. Membranes. There are five membranes present inside or we can say that like on the outer surface of this egg. The first is the inner membrane that is lipoidal layer. As its name suggests that lipoidal, it means that it is a fat layer. Then comes the three middle layers. Uh, we term them as membrana lucida. And one outer layer, we call it albuminous membrane which coats the egg. This membrane makes the egg sticky and therefore itchy to the host, which is important in the life cycle. Other characteristics. In which stage of development egg is passed out of the human body? In the stage when it has an embryo in it, so we call it embryonated. It contains C-shaped or tadpole-like embryo. Specific features and variations egg has a thin and smooth eggshell. It contains fully developed larvae but occasionally. It is more readily found on anal swabs than in feces. We'll discuss about how it looks under a microscope and how we collect it in the diagnosis but for now you can see it how it looks. This is the egg, as you can see. Its one side is flattened while the other side is convex. It has a thin walled colorless shell, as you can see this one, and it has a coiled developing larvae inside it. It does have those five membranes that we discussed earlier, but these are not visible right now in this diagram. The larva. It varies in size from 140 to 150 micrometers in length. It rapidly develops in egg. This is how it looks like. Adult worm. Let's discuss its structure. It has a cylindrical body. Elongated tubes with pointed tails will visualize. Adult worm has both the male and female, but both uh, live together but are separated. They're not uh, joined as we discussed in trematodes that both, are, both live in one body that trematodes are hermaphroditic but nematodes are not because both the male and female live together but are separated. There are three lips that surround the anterior mouth and they do have a cuticle. Uh, what is a cuticle? It is highly resistant layer that protects the womb. 
Worm has three main outer layers made of collagen and other compounds secreted by the epidermis. Uh, it has a large esophageal bulb, conspicuous anterior cuticular inflation or the swollen head. We'll visualize all these things in the diagram of pinworm a bit later. Adult males are strongly curved ventrally and are considerably small as compared to the female worm. The size of the adult male varies from 1 to 4 into 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 millimeters and the size of female varies from 8 to 13 into 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 millimeters. They are white in color. Their elongated tubes are whitish. This is the adult pinworm. As you can see, both the male and female are living together but are separated. In the picture on the right side, you can see that this is the female that is larger as compared to the male and both have the pointed tails. But look at the tail of the male worm that is coiled like that is curved as compared to the female. Female has a uterus uh, filled with eggs. It has a double bulb of esophagus and this is male. And uh, the posterior of female is straight. And look at the posterior of the male that is not straight. Habitat hosts. Humans are considered the only hosts for Enterobius formicularis. The infection, the enterobiasis, um, occurs only in humans and there is no animal reservoir or vector, although occasional infections have been reported in captive chimpanzees. Transmission. Transmission occurs via fecal oral route, but human-to-human -human transmission can also occur in Enterobius formicularis infections. Um, but infection definitely is transmitted by ingesting the womb eggs. Life cycle. It has only one stage, that is human cycle. Let's discuss it. The infection is acquired by ingesting the womb eggs. The eggs hatch in the small intestine, where the larvae differentiate into adults and migrate to the colon. The adult male and female worms live in the colon where mating occurs. At night, the female migrates from the anus and releases thousands of fertilized eggs on the perianal skin and into the environment. Within six hours, but in some places it was mentioned like within four to six hours, the eggs develop into embryonated eggs and become infectious. Reinfection can occur if they are carried to the mouth by fingers after scratching the itching skin. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of Enterobius formicularis. It starts here. The eggs are present on perianal folds and the larvae in the eggs start developing like egg becomes embryonated within 4 to 6 hours. Then when these embryonated eggs are ingested by humans, the cycle is repeated. Okay, how the cycle happens? When the embryonated eggs are ingested by humans, they travel to the small intestine where the larvae hatch out of these eggs. Then this larvae get matures into adult male and female. Both of them migrate to the colon and live there. Adults in the lumen of cecum. The gravida, the female, the gravid female migrates to the perianal region at night and lay eggs. This egg laying process at the night causes severe itching. So patients with enterobiasis uh, may feel itching at night. Pathogenesis. Perianal pruritus is the most prominent symptom. Pruritus is thought to be an allergic reaction to the proteins of either the adult female or the egg. But what actually is the pruritus? Pruritus is a skin condition in which there's itchy skin which irritates the patient a lot. Um, so patient feels to scratch the area. And the scratching predisposes to secondary bacterial infections. We can also call them super bacterial infection. Epidemiology. Enterobius is found worldwide and is most common health in the United States. 
children younger than 12 years of age are the most commonly affected group. Clinical findings. This disease is frequently asymptomatic. Thought symptoms can occur. Perianal pruritus is the most common one and it occurs especially at night, leading to excoriations and bacterial superinfection. What are excoriations? Excoriation is picking or scratching the skin so much that it can cause lesions there. Occasionally, invasion of female genital tract is present. These can be volvular vaginitis, pelvic or peritoneal granulomas. Other symptoms like teeth grinding, enuresis, you know what's it? Incontinence of the urine, insomnia, anorexia, irritability, abdominal pain. Um, this abdominal pain mimics the appendicitis, but actually it is not the appendicitis. But on appendectomy, these worms are found in uh, the, these nematodes are found in appendix, but there's no such research that these are responsible for causing uh, appendicitis. Lab diagnosis. Samples of feces and eggs will be required. How we collect eggs, I'm going to tell you a bit later. Microscopy will take the eggs under microscope and we will visualize them. I have shown you the egg when we were discussing the morphology and we have visualized that. How was it? It's one side was flattened, other was convex and it had three membranes and so on and so forth. I hope you remember. Then we'll look at the adult worm. Adult worm is visible on perianal skin, anus or in the feces. Scotch tape test or technique. This is used for collecting the sample of the eggs. We are going to discuss this technique in detail a bit later. No serologic tests are done. Scotch tape test or technique. Other names are cellophane, scotch tape test, Graham test or real Graham test. Its purpose is to obtain the sample, sample of eggs. Its one side is sticky and after collecting the sample, it is inserted um, or is put over the slide so we can visualize the slide under the microscope. What is the procedure of the scotch tape test or technique? Uh, take the piece of the scotch tape and press it against the patient's anal opening. And we will use that sticky side, okay? So this sticky side will pick up the pinworm X. Uh, after uh, getting or collecting those eggs, tape is then stuck to a microscope slide. These eggs can be viewed under the microscope. Unlike those of other intestinal nematodes that we will be discussing in upcoming videos, these eggs are not found in the feces. The small, whitish adult worms can be found in these tools or near the anus of the diapered children. Treatment drugs of choice. Um, in the introduction video of nematodes, I've told you guys that bendazole is the drug of choice for intestinal nematodes. So this is the Enterobius formicularis and it is an intestinal nematode. So these drugs will be albendazole, mebendazole and pyrenthal pamoate. These drugs kill the adult worms in the colon but not the eggs. So retreatment in two weeks is suggested. A reinfection is very common. Household members should also be treated. Prevention. There are no specific means of prevention but washing hands when preparing food and washing bed sheets, towels, diapers and clothing to remove eggs are helpful. Alright guys, let's review everything real quick. The name of the organism is Enterobius formicularis. Its common name is pinworm. It is responsible for causing enterobiasis, but in some places, um, its infection is called as pinworm infection or oxyuriasis, and its common names uh, are threadworm or seedworm. Its mode of transmission is via fecal-oral route, but human-to-human -human transmission can also occur by ingesting the worm eggs. It has only humans as its host. There are no animal reservoirs. Endemic areas are worldwide. Its primary location uh, is intestine. That is why it is an intestinal nematode. Diagnosis is based on finding eggs on skin. Treatment and the drugs of choice used for treating this disease are albendazole, mebendazole, and pyrenthal pamoid.
It has no insect vector and the stage that infects the human are the eggs and stage in the humans most associated with the disease, the female worm, that migrates out to the anus and lay eggs on perianal skin, causing itching. Important stage outside the humans That's are That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics for you guys. For example, take this one where I have uploaded amazing resources for pathology which textbooks you can use, uh, which online resources like YouTube channels, websites, apps, uh, flashcards you can use and some techniques as well. I've got my Twitter and I really upload blogs so do check them out. Till next time, Assalamualaikum.